Hi, I'm Patrick, and welcome to my whiskey den. Sorry I've been gone for so long, but I'm happy to be back. And what better way to come back than with a cast strength version of something to drink? Today we're going to try out J. Henry and Son's seven year old bourbon. Today we're looking at J. Henry & Sons Patton Road Reserve 7 year old cask strength bourbon. Now you don't find that very often in too many craft places that you end up with a 7 year old release, but this is one of the few, I think this was the second batch that they had come out at a 7 year old. Might be this fall before you get a chance to find another one because I was lucky enough to snag this one and I'm damn happy I did. So the cask strength comes out at 60.43% from, from bottle number 42, from barrel 153 from the bottle I got. Now, J. Henry and Sons is a family owned farm since 1946. They're in Dane County, just outside of Madison, about 20, 30 minutes or so. So they're an easy trip if you're going to Madison to go take a look at. Now, the farm had been there, like I said, since 1946. But in around 2010, when some of the whiskey production laws got a little loosened up in Wisconsin, J. Henry's decided to start thinking about doing this themselves. So they talked to the University of Wisconsin to see if they could use an heirloom red corn that UW-Madison had developed back in 1939. They got the okay, and on with the bourbon making they went. So 60% of the bourbon that they have is that Wisconsin heirloom red corn. Another 14 is wheat, another 14 is rye, and all of those are produced on the J. Henry and Son family farm. The barley comes from Chilton, Wisconsin, so it is still all Wisconsin made and in kind of a tight little neat ship there, which is nice. It's good to see. Now, after they get that all together and get the mash set, they send it up to the 45th parallel in New Richmond, Wisconsin, which is a distiller kind of closer over to the Minnesota side of things. They end up doing all the distilling for it, barrel it, and then send it back down to J. Henry and Son Farms where it spends typically five years in an old repurposed barn that is not climate controlled. So you get a lot of variance really high up, really high down in that point usually more down here in the long run but it is an interesting how they did not want to control it they wanted to let that set in and take effect now like I said most of J. Henry's releases are a five-year-old had the standard five-year-old the cast strength and uh, back in 2017 with the work of Nancy Fraley they released the Bella Fontaine which is one they finished in a cognac barrel that I absolutely love and think you should try much more readily available than the seven-year-old that we're trying here today much harder to get your hands on that one so if you can see we got a nice coloration to it a nice golden brown a little bit darker almost more so than just golden uh, almost an ambery color to it I really dig that on the nose you can tell right off the bat yes it's cast strength but for cast strength at 60% I don't find it very overpowering um, kind of probably underproofed in that in that smell range now I'm getting vanilla caramel that wood, but the caramel I'm getting is almost more like a, like right before you burn the, the sugars in caramel and it starts to turn really dark, like you left it on a little bit too long, like almost a molassesy, a darker rich note to the, to that, almost to the corn. I'm betting that's coming from the, from the, spec, from the specific red corn. Because you are getting that candied smell do get a little bit of dark plum almost a little apricot on the top end of it here and a light little citrus but fades away pretty quick but 
those are all really like kind of almost hidden notes. The base is kind of that thicker, more robust flavoring of the caramel, the vanilla, the wood. Almost like a creme brulee. A little touch to it at one point in the nose there at the end. It's pretty interesting. I, I, I like what I'm getting a, a lot of depth there. First drink, a little aggressive. I like it though. You get that definitely that you said that darker, almost like a burnt caramel kind of flavor. A little, a little bit richer caramel flavor. A little bit darker. Um, it's definitely at the front when you when it hits you right away. It rolls back really nice. You do get a little, that front end, like right as you swallow, you start to get some of those high notes, like that peach, the pear, a little bit higher, uh, maybe a little citrus light lemon, but it's just on the front part of your tongue when you swallow. Once it hits your mid-range, you get some of the deeper, rich notes, uh, definitely the wood there. That's where the rye spice starts to come forward, almost like it was hidden before, and that comes out pretty, pretty prominently for a little bit. Yeah, it's almost like the dark fruit and caramel are swirling now on a third drink before it goes in. Then you do get some of that barrel. It dries out your mouth a little bit there, but then the spice kind of comes through and you get a little bit more liquid back. I'm I'm enjoying how how complex this one is. I, I'm digging this one. Yeah, and it's a little challenging compared to some of, if it were, you know, even at 50. And it has a little bit of bite there, but I dig that bite because I like to know what you're drinking. Um, not just some fluff sometimes, but it has a little bit of bite in there, but it, it fades quick and goes into the spices and the barrel notes with a little bit of tannins right away. So it kind of hides it after you swallow and the other things come forward to layer over that real quick. I'm going to give it like a 4.3, some of the higher ones we gave out, but I, maybe it's the first one back after not drinking for so long and being kind of sick, but this is delicious. And there's a lot of layers there and it's not super forgiving, and I kind of like that, it's got a little bite to it, I, I dig this. Mm. So. In the next couple days we're going to be sending out some samples to some other channels that are around the country. We'll see what some people have to think about a couple of the things we've already had on this channel. See, because that's the whole point, is getting some of the stuff from the Midwest out and about and see what people all over the country are starting to think of what we're doing here. So, from my den to yours, can't wait to see you later. Remember, it's not the size of the den that matters. It's the love of the whiskey. Cheers.